Good morning and happy Tuesday. Today we're continuing in our story and you can see by the image we're talking about the return of Toad. My scoble thought this emoji was the perfect example because that's what I find myself doing. Anytime Toad is in our story, he's making some interesting choices. By the end of today, you will need to turn in Tuesday, September 29th, ELA. Our objective is to draft an opinion paragraph using a graphic organizer, and we'll do that at the end after our read aloud. I wanted to warm up with some sentences and fragments from yesterday's exit ticket. So this first phrase says, Toad dresses as a washerwoman. Is this a sentence or a fragment? It is a sentence. In order to make it a proper sentence, we should capitalize T for toad, the first word of the sentence, and it's a proper noun, a name, and put a period at the end. This next phrase jumps from the train. Is this a sentence or a fragment? It is a fragment. We are missing our subject. Who jumps from the train? Toad jumps from the train. We would need to capitalize Toad, put his name in the sentence, and put a period at the end. And then our last one, Toad from jail. Is this a sentence or a fragment? It is a fragment. We're missing the verb. Toad what from jail? We know who, but we don't know what. Toad escapes from jail. That's a complete sentence. We capitalize toad, put a period at the end, and put in our action word, our verb, escapes. That's what toad is doing. So today we see toad seeing rat. At the end of our last ch chapter, we left off on a bit of a cliffhanger. We didn't know if rat would welcome toad in or not. Keep these vocabulary words in mind as we go into our story. Our first word is imprisoned. Say it. Imprisoned, and that's to put in jail. Our next word is indignant. Say it. Indignant, and that means angry because of an unjust or unfair situation. Indignant. Sentries, say it, sentries, and that's people who guard an entrance or stand watch, much like these British soldiers. They are sentries. Today we'll revisit the idea of point of view. We talked about this a few lessons ago, but there are three main points of view. First person, the main character is telling the story. You would see words like I, me, we, my, ours. Second person, the narrator or author is telling the, the story to you, the reader. You're in the story. You would hear words like you, your, and yours. And then finally, third person. The author or narrator is telling the story, but it's they're not part of the story. It can be an omniscient, which means over from the outside, or a limited view. You would see words like he, she, it, they, or them. We remember that our story, The Wind and the Willows, is written from the third person point of view. There's an author or a narrator, but they're not part of the story. We've also discussed perspective, which is how someone sees or experiences something. If you're looking from one point of view at a number on the floor, you might say it's six, or you could say it's nine based on the way you are seeing the number. That's the same thing with perspective. It can shift from one character to another and tells how they view the events of the story. We've also discussed dialogue, and this is the actual words the characters are using. You would see quotation marks, those lines, around their dialogue, their words. And then also we 
we've talked about narration. So who tells the story and how the story is being told. So far in our story, we have seen Toad act conceited and it's always got him into trouble. Anytime he starts to feel full of himself, he starts to get a little bit more and more reckless. How do you think Rat is going to feel after Toad tricked him and escaped Toad Hall? We remember that he was feeling very embarrassed, especially when Badger scolded him. So do you think Rat is happy to see Toad? Probably not. You probably wouldn't like it either if a friend lied to you and tricked you. Would you be willing to let bygones be bygones? I mean, forget the past and be friends with them now or help them? I think even Miss Goble would struggle with that. But we know that Rat is a loyal friend. We'll have to see what happens today. Make a prediction about what you think will happen in today's story. So do you think Rat is going to help Toad? Or do you think he's going to turn him away? And then listen carefully and see if your prediction came true. Let's tuck on in because it's time for the story. Let's find out what happens. The rat put out a neat little brown paw, gripped Toad firmly by the gruff of the neck, and gave great hoist and a pull. The waterlogged Toad came up slowly but surely over the edge of the hole. At last, he stood safe and sound in the hall, streaked with mud and weed, and with water streaming off of him. Oh, Ratty, he cried. I've been through so much since the last time I saw you. Toad, the water rat said firmly. Go upstairs at once and take off that old cotton rag that looks as if it once belonged to a washerwoman. Clean yourself and put on some of my clothes. Now be off. I'll have something to say to you later. You might have heard a family member say to that say that to you before. I'll talk to you later. And that always makes you worried. What are they going to say? Toad was at first inclined to do some talking. He had had enough of being ordered about. However, he caught sight of himself in the looking glass with the bonnet perched over one eye and he changed his mind. He went very quickly upstairs to the rat's dressing room. There he had a thorough wash and changed his clothes. So at first, Rat is starting to tell him what to do, and Toad is feeling that conceit and anger rise up again in him, and he's thinking, no one can tell Toad what to do. But then he catches a glimpse of himself in the mirror and realizes, yeah, I should change. By the time he came down again, luncheon was on the table. While they ate, Toad told Rat about his adventures. When at last Toad had talked himself to a standstill, there was silence for a while. And then Rat said, Now, Toady, on your own admission, you have been handcuffed, imprisoned, starved, chased, terrified out of your life, insulted, jeered at, and flung into the water. By a woman, too. Don't you see what a fool you've been making of yourself? And all because you stole a motor car. Toad heaved a deep sigh and said, very humbly, Quite right, Ratty. I can see that. But I'm going to be good, a good toad. As for the motor cars, I've not been so keen on them for a while. I have something else in mind, but all in good time. Let us have our coffee, and then I'll stroll down to Toad Hall. So Toad is claiming that he sees the errors of his ways, but he's already thinking about something bigger and better than a motor car. So nothing good can come from that. Stroll down to Toad Hall? cried the rat, greatly excited. Do you mean to say you haven't heard? Heard what? said Toad, turning rather pale. Do you mean to tell me, shouted the rat, that you've heard nothing about the stoats and weasels? What, the wild wooders? cried Toad, trembling in every limb. What have they been doing? And they, how they've been taken, and how they've been, and taken Toad Hall, continued the rat. Toad leaned his elbows on the table, and a large tear welled up in each of his eyes. So Toad has just found out that his home has been taken over by people from the Wildwood. So the weasels and stoats, they've taken over his house. Go on, Ratty, he murmured presently. Tell me all. When you got into that, that trouble of yours, said the rat, Toad merely nodded. 
Well, it was a good deal talked about, explained the rat. The river bankers stuck up for you, but the wild wood animals said it served you right, and they went about saying you would never come back again. Toad nodded once more. The mole and the badger insisted that you would come back again, somehow. Toad began to sit up in his chair and to smirk a little. They were so sure that you would never be seen again, continued the rat, that they arranged to move their things into Toad Hall. And so one dark night, a band of weasels crept silently up the driveway. Simultaneously, a body, a body of desperate ferrets took possession of the kitchen garden, the backyard, and offices, while a company of skirm skirmishing stoats occupied the conservatory and the billiard room. So in the middle of the night, these animals from the wild wood came in and took over his house. They didn't think he would be back. And here's the animals from the wild wood. The mole and the badger were sitting by the fire when those bloodthirsty villains broke down the doors and rushed in upon them. They were unarmed and taken by surprise. Those two poor faithful creatures were turned out into the cold. The wild wooders have been living in Toad Hall ever since, concluded the rat. Oh, have they, said Toad, getting up and seizing a stick. I'll see about that. It's no good, Toad, called the rat after him. You better come back and sit down. You'll only get into trouble. So Toad hears that these people have kicked his friends out of his house and taken it over, and he wants to do something about it. He says, they'll see about that. But Toad was off. He marched rapidly down the road, fuming and muttering to himself, till he got near the front gate. At that moment, there popped up from behind the, behind the palings a long yellow ferret with a gun. And palings are fences that are pointed sticks. Kind of like a palace -y. Who comes there? said the ferret sharply. Stuff and nonsense, said Toad very angrily. What do you mean by talking like that to me? Come out of there at once or I'll... The ferret never said a word, but he brought his gun up to his shoulder. Toad prudently dropped flat in the road and bang, a bullet whistled over his head. The startled Toad scrambled to his feet and scampered off as hard as he could. He went back very crestfallen and told the water rat. What did I tell you, said the rat. They've got sentries posted and they are all armed. You must just wait. So he does not get his home back. He is confronted by an armed sentry. That's our vocabulary word, a guard. And he shoots at him. Thankfully, he drops to the ground, but he does not get the house. He had to run away. Still, Toad was not inclined to give in all at once. So he got out of the boat and set off rowing up the river to where the garden front of Toad Hall came down to the waterside. Arriving within sight of his old home, he surveyed the land cautiously. All seemed very peaceful and quiet. He could see the whole front of Toad Hall glowing in the evening sunshine. He would try the boathouse first, he thought. Very warily, he paddled up to the mouth of the creek and was just passing under the bridge when crash. A great stone dropped from above, smashed through the bottom of the boat. The boat filled and sank, and Toad found himself struggling in deep water. It'll be your head next time, Toady, the stoats called out at him. Those are the stoats in the picture. The indignant Toad swam to shore while they laughed and laughed. The Toad retraced his weary way on foot and related his disappointing experiences to the water rat once more. Well, what did I tell you, said the rat very crossly. And now look here, see what you've been and done. Lost me my boat I was so fond of. The toad saw at once how foolish he had acted. He admitted his errors and made a full apology to rat. Ratty, I see that I have been a headstrong and willful toad. Henceforth, I will take no action without your advice and full approval. Do you think that is true? Do you think Toad is really not going to do anything until he asks Toad, or until he asks Rat? I don't know, that makes me doubt a little bit because Toad, anytime he's made this kind of confession in the past, has not actually changed his ways. He's just doubled down and went on to the next big thing or had another explosive moment where he's gotten himself into more trouble. We'll see. If that is really so, said the good-natured rat, already appeased, 
then my advice to you is to have some supper. In addition, do nothing until we have seen the mole and the badger and taken their advice. So he doesn't want him to do anything. He wants him to have some supper and wait. Oh, ah, uh, yes, of course, the mole and the badger, said Toad. What's become of them, the dear fellows? Well, you, well, may you ask, said the rat reproachfully. While you were riding about in the country in expensive motor cars, those two poor devoted animals were trying every which way to get your property back for you. You don't deserve to have such loyal friends. So rat is scolding him a little for just now thinking to ask about badger and mole. He's been here this whole time and he's just been concerned about getting his house back. He didn't ask about what happened to Mole and Badger until just now. I'm an ungrateful beast, I know, sobbed Toad, shedding bitter tears. Let me go out and find them, out into the cold, dark night. Hold on a bit. Surely I heard the chink of dishes on a tray. Supper here's at last. Hooray, come on, Ratty. So he's already distracted from his initial moment of thoughtfulness about his friend because dinner has arrived. They had just finished their meal when came a heavy knock at the door. Toad was nervous, but the rat, nodding mysteriously at him, went straight up to the door and opened it, and in watched Mr. Badger. Mr. Badger looked decidedly bedraggled. He came solemnly up to Toad, shook him by the paw, and said, Welcome home, Welcome home Toad. Alas, this is a poor homecoming. Then he turned his back on him and helped himself to a large slice of pie. And that's where we leave off. We still don't know where Toad is, or sorry, where um, Mole is. We know that Badger has arrived and he has said a few words to Toad, but not very much. And both Badger and Mole have not been back since trying to defend Toad's property. So. We don't know what happened to Mole just yet, and we don't know how Badger is going to react to seeing Toad. Were your predictions correct or incorrect? So Rat did take in Toad. He helped him out. Thinking about what Toad has gone through and how he feels uh, after his adventures, Toad doesn't want to go on anymore. He says that he's been handcuffed, imprisoned, starved, chased, terrified for his life, insulted, jeered at, and flung into the water. Toad said he's had enough of adventures and he regrets being conceited. Again, we don't know if this will stick, but that's how he's feeling right now. He's feeling pretty silly and embarrassed. What happened to Toad Hall while he was gone? So while he was gone, weasels, ferrets, and stoats moved in. They didn't think Toad was ever coming back, and they didn't support his irresponsibility. They said he would never be back because of what he has done, and so they just took it over. What happens each time Toad tries to go home? So the first time a ferret shoots him, shoots at him, and the second time Toad used Rat's boat but instead a stoat drops a stone into the boat and it breaks through the bottom and the boat sinks. So he's not able to get into his home either time. All right, so today your exit ticket is not a Google form. It is just this Google document. You will all have your own copy in uh, your Google Classroom post so this is already in your classroom post. You should be able to find it. Please, please, please be careful when typing in this document. If you erase something accidentally, hit this undo button in the top corner and I'll highlight that for you here. It's on your toolbar um, right at the top of your document. You can see a back arrow and a forward arrow. The one that points left backward that is the undo button. So if something goes wrong, just hit that. What you're going to do, you're going to rewrite three complete sentences stating examples of when Toad was irresponsible. This is our final draft, so take your time. Yesterday we did write three sentences of when Toad was irresponsible, so think back to that submission 
If you want to pull it up, you can. Um, if you've already submitted it, you should be able to edit after submit. So if you want to pull up yesterday's Google form and look at it, you can, or you can go off of memory. You must use complete sentences. I already started each sentence for you. First, next, finally. You can say first, an example of when Toad was irresponsible is when he stole a motor car. Next, he ended up in prison and decided to escape rather than serving his sentence. Finally, when the police begin to approach him, rather than turning himself in, he continues running. As you can see, Toad is extremely irresponsible. Or you can restate the topic sentence and say, as you can see, Toad demonstrates the theme of irresponsibility, period. So make sure you fill in all of these boxes. TS means topic sentence, that's the topic of our paragraph. And I've already written that one for you. The topic is, in my opinion, Toad demonstrates the theme of irresponsibility. Your job today is to fill in the middle three detail sentences and write a conclusion sentence that wraps up the paragraph. So as you can see, Toad is extremely irresponsible, something like that. You'll find this under Tuesday, September 29th, ELA. It is labeled opinion writing. Under week four, September 28th through October, 20, October 2nd, click on Tuesday, September 29th. And when you're done, don't forget to turn it in. Today, you won't have a, you won't have a submit button on the actual assignment. You will simply exit out of the document, go back to Google Classroom and hit turn in. That's how I'll see your work. Do not turn it in blank. And that's it. Have a great day. If you haven't need any help, please call or text me. Bye.